G'day, so in today's video, I wanna show you how to correctly use elbow crutches, but more specifically, I wanna show you what you need to be thinking of while you're using them, how to fit them specifically to you and your body type, but most importantly, what you need to be thinking of to optimize how quickly you can get off these as soon as possible. Because clinically, as a physiotherapist, I don't necessarily see too many errors with people using two crutches, but when we see someone walking around with one crutch or a single stick or a cane, I often see a lot of room for improvement. So if you've just hurt yourself and you wanna learn how to use this correctly, or you're someone who consistently uses one stick or a cane to get by day to day, I'm hopeful that this information can help optimize your experience. So for me as a physiotherapist who's big on education, the single most important piece of information that you need to know about anything crutch or stick related is the purpose of why you're using it in the first place. And as you can probably guess, the reason why we have crutches is to help unload an area that can't tolerate normal loading on its own, whether that's because of an injury or damage or wear and tear or strength or anything like that. And the main reason why it's just so important to remember that the reason why we use a crutch or a stick is to absorb the force that you don't naturally feel comfortable putting through your tissue at the moment is because this drives your progress through a crutch or a stick. Before we get to that in a little bit more detail, it's important to circle back and make sure that you know how to fit your crutches correctly so that you can express as much normal movement as possible while you've got them. And what you may notice is that when I use these crutches specifically, you may see that if we compare this to what I'm about to show you in a second, these crutches are a little bit too short for me because instead of allowing me to be up nice and comfortably tall in a good posture, which is always really important for everything, and when I'm in a good posture, there's too much of a gap between the bottom of the crutches and the floor. So in order to connect to the ground, I need to sacrifice my posture somewhere to make up that difference. And while I can still perfectly get around with the crutches as they are, if you sustained a bad enough injury that you need to use your crutches for a number of weeks, then it can very easily start to take its toll in your upper back, your shoulders, and your neck as well. And clinically as a physiotherapist, one of the last things that we wanna do is have to treat extra dysfunction unnecessarily because we didn't have your crutches fitted correctly. So for me, a great reference point here is that when you stand up comfortably tall and have your crutch just next to you, ideally the handle should line up pretty closely with the bump at the side of your wrist. And as you might be able to see here, there's a decent gap between those two spots for me. So if I bring this up two levels just to see what that feels like, and I place my hand back in there again, straight away I feel comfortably tall. I don't feel like I'm dropping my shoulders at all. And I feel like if I increase the length one more notch, I might feel like I'm up a little bit higher than I would like as well. So in a perfect world, when you've got good posture, you should feel like your crutch is there supporting you in that posture. So if I then change the same thing on the other crutch and take it up two notches. And if we compare it to what you may have seen before, I feel automatically like I'm able to be up a little bit taller than I was previously. And what's also important is that if the crutch is too long, I don't feel like I need to swing my crutches out to clear the extra length. I don't feel like my crutch is going to get caught on the ground as I walk past it. It feels a more natural expression of good body mechanics, which will ultimately allow the rest of my body to feel as comfortable as possible while I'm consigned to these crutches. And then the second part of fitting an elbow crutch is making sure that the elbow component is also comfortable for you. As this currently sits for me, it does feel at a comfortable level. We just wanna make sure that the actual ring that you put your elbow into isn't coming up towards the end point of your elbow. But as long as you feel like you've got the length of the crutch from the handle to the floor optimized for you, you can then play around with what you feel is the most comfortable for you over time. So once you've optimized the fit of your elbow crutches, we then need to come back to the idea of why you're using these crutches in the first place to dictate what crutch technique you use. So to run through them for you, the first is probably the classic one where if you can't put any body weight through your limb at all, you can lift that leg up and we can use your crutches to absorb 100% of your body weight that your leg doesn't allow you to do itself. If you feel like there is a level of tolerance that you have to put pressure through that leg, then we have a few options to work from. The first is what we call a touch weight bearing or a weight bearing as tolerated technique. And essentially what that means is if you're touch weight bearing, that you're just touching the toe of the injured side just on the ground and still absorbing the majority of your body weight through the arms of your crutches. If you can tolerate a little bit more body weight, then we can essentially have what's more of a, a normal walking pattern where you can either step to the crutch. This allows you to control your motion a little bit more 
Or if you feel like things are a little bit better for you again, what we can do is what's called a step through gait, where instead of having your crutches out in front and ending up in line with them, the crutch comes out and you step through those crutches, allowing you to express even more normality through that affected leg. But the reason why it's just so important to understand that the purpose of these crutches isn't to take all of your body weight out of the equation, it's just to absorb the weight that you don't feel comfortable putting through your affected side in any given moment, then you can very quickly understand how much body weight and what technique suits you the most. So if you've sprained your ankle and you don't put any body weight through that ankle at all for a couple of weeks, loading is where the tissues learn to adapt and to heal fastest. Like most things, it's a balancing act where if you put too much load through an injured structure that's beyond its current tolerance, that's disadvantageous. But at the same time, if you put too little load through your tissues, they can't develop that tensile strength that you need to quickly get back to what you want to do again once you get rid of these crutches. So what's really important to understand is that whatever technique you find, it has to be specific to how you feel in any given day with the knowledge that if you can put the tiniest little bit of body weight through your foot to begin with, then as your tissue naturally becomes better and better and better, without you having to think about it, you'll more intuitively start to load up more and more of your body weight without anybody actually needing to tell you how to progress this yourself. Because probably the single biggest mistake that I see as a physiotherapist therapist is that people don't listen to their body enough. It's almost like we've promoted this idea that you need to rest your tissue completely to let it heal. But we know that it does need some loading, as I said, to optimize that healing process. But the amount of loading that you need to put through that tissue is based on how it feels to load that tissue. So if you've broken a bone, then clearly any load may not feel comfortable in any way. But that's why we have things like a moon boot to try and allow you to take some of the load away from the injured area so you can still put some load through the injured area. But if you completely divorce yourself from loading up that injured tissue, then it just increases your rehab time and it decreases how effectively we can get you back to doing what you want to do as soon as possible. And if you can keep reminding yourself that the reason why we have these crutches is to just absorb what you don't currently feel comfortable with, then the next most important question that we see a lot of people ask is when do you get off your crutches? And if we're following the idea that understanding how much load you can tolerate through that leg dictates the amount of pressure that you're putting through the crutches at any given point in time, then if you feel like you're walking as normal as you can with the crutches and you can progress to a point where you don't necessarily feel like you need the crutches and you can carry them, then you can be safe in the knowledge that you're at that point in time where you can genuinely consider getting rid of these crutches. But the other thing to consider with this point is that there's a difference between your safe, predictable home environments and the outside world. And clinically what we see a lot is that people feel far more comfortable getting rid of their crutches first at home in an environment where they can genuinely dictate how big they have to step, how how fast they have to step, how quickly they need to do those movements, and things are less likely to get out of hand. But that's not often the same thing from when we're out in the real world where we have very little control over everyone else in our environment around us. So you might find that your ability to practice walking without a crutch at home precedes your ability to walk around in the general world without those crutches as well. But if you're always listening to how your body feels, how long you're using those crutches for, and what amount of body weight you're putting through that affected leg, then you'll have far more insight than anyone else will as to when the appropriate time is to take away these crutches. Obviously, it's always really important and responsible to check in with your health professional or your doctor just to make sure that they're also okay with that next step. But if you've consistently listened to how your body's been feeling and you've naturally progressed from maybe not loading it up too much to loading it up fully and feeling comfortable with that and not limping at the same time, then that's a very strong sign that you can then progress off those crutches. So once you feel like you've got a really good understanding of how to load up your tissue respectfully with your crutches over time, there may come a point that you feel like you can't necessarily go from two crutches to no crutches and it might benefit you to progress to one crutch before making the leap to zero crutches. And this is a common topic of conversation that we have with people that have one crutch is which side does the crutch actually have to go on? And what's interesting about one elbow crutch, one underarm crutch or one walking stick or cane is that maybe counterintuitively it has to go on the opposite side to the one that you've hurt or injured. If you've ever seen the TV show House you'll see that he's always walking with the cane on his affected side, it's poor mechanics. And it's not an optimal way to load that affected side. And in theory, it can potentially help you accrue more dysfunction that you have to get rid of on top of everything else that you're trying to rehab already. And so the reason why this is, is if my right side here has been injured or affected, if I have the crutch on the opposite side, when I place my foot down and the crutch down at the same time, it allows me to maintain a normal upright posture. And what happens mechanically is that the forces at the side of my hip here are balanced 
balanced out by the forces and the reaction forces of placing the crutch down into the ground. And what this allows us to do, and it may sound counterintuitive, is that when I place that foot down, it absorbs the load better than if I was to have it on my injured side and have to do the old penguin walk to shift my center of gravity over the stick to move forwards. So again, when it's on the opposite side, so this side being my, my injured side, it allows me to maintain a neutral posture. The forces that go through my arm and through my leg are more balanced. And if my issue is on the opposite side, when I'm trying to take the load off, it will force me to shift my body weight across over that stick, fundamentally changing how I load everything in my body. So another important consideration for anyone who has crutches is how do you navigate stairs? It's always really important to be prepared just so that we can decrease the likelihood of you having a potential fall or at the very least aggravating your condition further. And again, this becomes relatively obvious if we just think of the principles of why you have your crutches in the first place. When you're going up and down a stair, we wanna make sure that when you load up that leg the most, that you have the crutches there to support it. And a little mnemonic that I was taught coming through physio school is that good go to heaven and bad go to hell. And all that means is when you're going up, you wanna have your good leg or your unaffected leg going up first. And when you're going down, you wanna have your affected leg or bad leg going first in front of you. So how that looks, if we assume that this leg is my good leg and this leg is my injured leg. When you address that step, we wanna make sure that your good leg goes up first. The reason for that is because you have your crutches on the ground, it's a bit awkward to get your crutches up. And because we wanna get your crutches up, we don't wanna leave your leg behind to suffer more load than it can tolerate currently. So keeping your crutches down and pairing that up with your injured side, it makes sense that we just lift your good foot up, place it up on the step. There's not too many issues with that leg, so it should be able to pull you up into a good position before you put your crutches down and then putting your affected leg down as well. This is a surefire way to make sure that you feel stable and in control of this movement at all times. So then when we go down the step and we lead with that affected leg, because we don't want to load up that leg any more than it feels comfortable, we don't want to divorce that leg from the crutches. And if we lower ourselves down first, it puts our arms in a bit of an awkward position that's less stable. So again, making sure that we're loading ourselves up on our good leg, you can put your crutches down first to make sure you've got a stable platform. And then as you lower your affected leg down, you can manage the amount of load that you put through that leg all the time. But ultimately, as I've said a lot in this video, it's really important that you pay attention to your body. That may require you to potentially take less pain medication if you can tolerate it and if it's appropriate. It can often be a personal preference, but the principles of how you use those crutches are the same. Were you someone who always intuitively used a crutch or a stick on the injured side and is using it on the opposite side news to you entirely? Let me know in the comments down below. But I genuinely hope that that was helpful and insightful for you in some way. If you are injured and you feel you may need my help more specifically than I can give you in this video, please consider booking an online consultation with me. I'll leave a link in the description below. But with that being said, thank you very much for watching and hope to see you next time.